Hi everyone, welcome back to the part 4 of this tutorial on empirical formula. Now in this tutorial we are going to see problems that are somewhat different from what we saw in the past three. Uh, in one topic of the empirical formula we will see something called a hydrate. And, uh, and here we have a kind of hydrate. And how do we know it's a hydrate? Well, it is a ionic compound, sometimes we call it a salt. Um, a salt is a product uh, from uh, acid and base mixing together having a chemical reaction which we will talk more on the uh, acid and base chapter but here we have an ionic compound and with some amount of water being uh, physically attracted by the ionic compound now for this hydrate it will appear it will appear as some kind of dry product uh, it would not be watery, it would not be something dissolving solution because the water here is not combined together, is not attracted to each other, to other water molecule. It is actually attracted by the ionic compound being kind of like trapped in the uh, crystal structure. So we call this kind of compound as a hydrate. Um, and if you, go, you can go online and find out some pictures of the hydrate. But let's go back to this question. The question here is that we are given the formula Na2CO3 sodium carbonate with some amount of H2O. Some amount. We do not know how many H2O is being attracted by this, uh, uh, by this ionic compound. And this is our goal. Our goal is to find out, to find out how many water molecules are being attracted by sodium carbonate. So we are given some information. We have this the original sample of the hydrate, which is measured at 2.714 grams at the very beginning. And the way we can find out the number of the water molecule in water molecule in the compound is that we would like to find out how many what, what is the percent or what's the mass of water in the compound. Because if we know what is the amount of the water in the compound, we could find out how many, uh, how many uh, water molecules are there. So the way we, the way, the way we remove the water molecule is by boiling away. Because if we heat it hot enough, the water will evaporate. It will boil and change the steam. Um, which hopefully will, there will be a video on that part of the uh, on that part of the procedure uh, on the channel. So this is what happened after heating it, after removing most of the water molecule until it becomes a very constant mass. We have this mass, 1.006 grams. So what does it mean? What does what does this number mean? 1.006 gram. Well, it means that we have 1.006 grams of just sodium carbonate, or we can call it anhydrous salt, without any water, anhydrous. Okay, so we have this, um, we have this mass for sodium carbonate. So what can we do? What can we do to uh, to find out what the x is? what this number should be. Well, the way to approach this problem is that, well, in the previous uh, tutorials, in the previous problems that we looked at, we have individual elements. We have, we're trying to find out the subscript of the individual elements. But here, we are not going to look at the individual elements because it does, it would not do us any good. So what we would do is that we would treat, we would treat this like an element and we will treat the H2O like an element and the concept is the same the concept is we are trying to find the ratio of these two parts okay but what we do what we are doing here is is that uh, we are not trying to find the subscript we are not trying to find the subscript for the elements or for these two parts we are actually trying to find the ratio and that number is going to be the x. Now one thing is very good for this type of problem is that well we have the ratio we have one part of the ratio given already because this is going to be one. We have no coefficient 
in the very beginning. Or, or actually, there's an implicit one at the very beginning. So it's going to be one to something, one to something else. So we're going to use this as a clue to guide us through the, the process of finding out what the x would be. So we have this part, we have the mass of this part, which is good, just like what we did in the previous two tutorials. But can we find out the mass of the water? Well, there is a way to find the mass of the water because we measure the mass before heating and after heating. So by looking at the difference of the two masses, which the difference is caused by the removal of the water, of the H2O, so we can find out what the, uh, the mass of water is in the original sample. So here is very simple. What we would do here is that we would like to find out the mass of H2O in the sample. And the way to do this is by, the, by looking at the difference. So we have the original mass minus the mass after the heating process. And what we would get here is a number 1.708 grams. And this is going to be the mass of water. Okay. Now, after we have these two masses, the mass of the water and the mass of the sodium carbonate. It is just like what we did in the previous tutorial, just like those two. So we have the mass and we will treat it like an element. We don't have to divide it into every individual element. We will treat the whole compound like an element and we will apply the concept of comparing the quantity. Um, so what we will do here is this. Let me erase a circle. Okay, and we're going to remove this part since you saw the calculation already. And uh, I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to write 1.708 grams of uh, H2O. Okay, so let me erase it. Let me erase this calculation. So, what we would do here is that we can find out the molar mass of this whole thing because we are treating it like an element. In the previous example, we look at the element, we apply the molar mass of the element. In this case, we are treating this whole compound as an element and we will apply the molar mass of this compound and we will try to find out the quantity. So this is what we will get. Okay, so one mole of Na2CO3. So what's the uh, molar mass of this compound? Well, if you just add the masses together, okay, you look at the numbers from the periodic table, you should get a number 106 uh, grams of Na2CO3. Okay, and, and what we would get here is going to be 0.949 mole of Na2CO3. Two CO3. Okay. Oh, hold up. It is yeah point. Yeah, okay. It should be point zero nine four nine. Okay, I missed a zero there. So point zero nine four nine moles of Na two CO three. And oh, hold on. I made a mistake here. It should be point zero zero nine four nine moles of Na two CO three. And then. Um, here, we will apply the molar mass of the water, which is 18 grams of water, and that is 0 0.0949 moles of water. So we look at these two numbers, these two quantities, <coughs> and uh, we will divide by the smallest number, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> So that we would find the uh, find the find the ratio of these two uh, compound. So in this case, this is the smallest number. So divide by that number, nine four nine mole. Uh, this one divide by point zero. Uh, I wrote, uh, let me fix this. Point zero zero nine four nine. 
So if you look at these two numbers, you can clearly see that this is going to be, let me use another color, this is going to be 1, since it's multiply, uh, divided by itself. And uh, for this one, this is 10 times, the numerator is 10 times larger than the denominator. So we would have 10, okay? So we have 1 of the n 2 CO3 and 10 of the H2O. So this is the ratio between these two compounds. 1 n 2 CO3 is to 10 H2O. So by this relationship, we can then conclude that the compound the hydrate is going to be Na2CO3 sodium carbonate dot um, 10 H2O. So, as you can see here, we are applying the same concept that we learned in the previous tutorial. And although at the very beginning it looks somehow somewhat different from the previous questions, but, um, but if you look into it and if you think through it, we are applying the identical concept. We are applying the concept of comparing the quantities. It is just the fact that in this case, we are not going to look into the individual elements because we are not trying to find out how individual elements is being, uh, what is the subscript of the individual elements. Now, we are trying to find out what is the coefficient of this water. And this is the reason why we can treat this like an element like what we did in the past, uh, and treat this H2 like an element, and what we do here is to find out the quantity based on the mass given. So in this case, we do not need to go all the way back to the percent composition because we have the mass ready. The question is already halfway done. And well, and the other the other part that uh, uh, go along, that goes along with the mass is that well, make sure you know how to find out the mass of the water make sure you understand the process of finding out the mass of the water because we are applying heat applying heat heat to remove the water so the difference between the original sample and the anhydrous salt is going to be the mass of the water so this is how we get the uh, mass of the water and then we do the same thing compare the quantities and this is how we get the coefficient 10 and there are a lot of different hydrates, and uh, and on the work on 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 the worksheet that I had on my website, uh, it is there will be some other questions that is very similar to this question, and you are going to apply the same kind of concept to to find out the coefficient. So I hope this tutorial would help you to to uh, overcome the obstacles that you may have you may have in the past on the hydrate problem and I hope that you are clearly seeing the concept how similar that we're doing uh, in this problem and the comparing to the previous two problems.